Hey everyone, welcome to another video here on the Wreath Network on Try Hack Me. Today we're going to be taking a look at Task 32, Personal PC Enumeration. We will soon be moving on to the final teaching point of this network, antivirus evasion techniques. Before we can do that, however, we first need to scope out the final target. We, need, or we know from the briefing that this target is likely to be the other Windows machine on the network. By process of elimination, we can tell that this is Thomas's PC, which he told us has antivirus software installed. If we're very lucky, it will be out of date though. As always, we need to enumerate the target before we can do anything else. But how can we do this from a compromised Windows host? As mentioned way back in the pivoting enumeration task, Nmap won't work on Windows unless it's been properly installed on the target. Scanning through one proxy is bad, but at this point we'd be scanning through two proxies, which would be unbearable. We could write a tool to do it for us, but let's leave that for the time being. There will be more than enough coding in the upcoming section as is. Instead, let's look uh, closer to home and ask one burning uh, question. How do Empire modules work? For the most part, Empire modules are quite literally just scripts, usually in PowerShell, that are executed by the framework through an active agent. In other words, these are just PowerShell scripts and we have a uh, PowerShell access to the target. For the sake of learning, let's upload the Empire port scanning script and execute it manually on the target. In our current situation, on an isolated target communicating through a jump server, under normal circumstances uploading tools manually would usually be something of a chore. Think relays and web servers. Fortunately, Evil WinRM gives us several easy options for transferring and including tools. First up, we have the upload and download option. The first option available to us is the inbuilt upload slash download feature built into the tool. From within Evil WinRM, we can use upload and then local file path and remote file path to upload files to the target. Conversely, we can use download, remote file path, local file path, uh, so again, opposite of the upload, to download files back from the target. These could come in handy if we, say, wanted to upload a tool to the target, save the results from running it to a log file, then download the log file back to our machine or attacking machine for storage. In both instances, if we miss out uh, the destination file path, uh, for example, the remote file path on upload or the local file path on download, the tool will be downloaded into our current working directory. And we can see an example of this of, so it's a little bit cut off on my screen, but the netcat.exe tool being uploaded um, and we can see that uh, we can download demo.txt um, in this specific case, and it's just going to go to our working directory. In this example, we upload an example tool, netcat.exe, to C Windows temp. Uh, we then create a new file, demo.txt, and download it from the local or current working, or to the current working directory, rather. Note that in the real world, using C Windows temp directory is often a bad idea as it's flagged as a common location for hackers to upload tools. In this case, we are using it to keep the box neat and tidy for other users though. Local scripts. Uploading tools is all good, well and good. What if the tool happens to be a PowerShell script? Uh, then there is another and even more convenient method. If you check the help menu for evil WinRM, you will see an interesting dash lowercase s option. This allows us to specify a local directory containing PowerShell scripts. These scripts will automatically be imported into our evil WinRM session. For example, if we happen to have our scripts located at opt scripts, uh, we could include them in the connection with evil WinRM dash u username dash p for the password dash i for the IP and then dash s opt scripts. Let's use this option to include the empire port scan module. If you install Empire in opt, which is what I ended up doing, uh, then the file path will be opt Empire data modules uh, or module contents, situational source, network, and then it'll be in that directory. If you installed it elsewhere, then the file path will obviously be slightly different. However, the module itself will still be in the same rel or place relative to the Empire directory. Uh, so within that subfolder. A copy of this tool is also included in the zip file attached, or attached to task one, or you can just download it directly here if you can't find it locally. Regardless, we can now sign in as an administrator using the password hash discovered previously, including the uh, Empire network scanning scripts. So in this case, let me go ahead 
and we will go to, I think I have this open. There we go. So I have evil win RM, um, on, let's see. Oh, that was my listener. Um, I have evil win RM installed on my Kali box. So now we should be able to do that from, uh, let me go to number seven. Uh, we should be able to go to our main wreath directory and we can run evil win rm and then dash u administrator and then dash capital h for the password hash i'm gonna grab that from let's see uh i think i have that on a previous task let me go ahead i will pause this for just a moment i'm gonna go grab that there we go we're back i grabbed this from task 21 it's one of the answers in there so dash I, and then we need the IP that we're connecting to. It's 10, 200, 72, 150, I believe. And then we need dash S and the empire directory, which is going to be this one. So we can just copy and paste that. And let's try running that. Uh, da, da, da. Looks like my directory it is not happy with. Uh, so let me go ahead and do ls opt empire. Uh, let's see. Looks like, okay. Data. And then we want module. Uh, it looks like module contents is not there. Uh, situational awareness network. Okay. So there we go. Uh, so this needs to be module source. Uh, at the time of recording this. And that's going to be situational awareness. Module source. And then situational awareness. And let's give that a try. There we go. Cool. So now we have that. Uh, type invoke dash port scan dot ps1 and press enter to initialize the script. This will take just a moment. Let's see. There we go. So we can see our prompt is back. Now if we type git help space invoke dash port scan, we should see the help menu for the tool without having to import or upload anything manually. And we can see that completed successfully there. Very, very helpful. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite features of Evil WinRM. The Empire Port Scan module is designed to be similar to Nmap in terms of syntax. You are encouraged to read through the full help menu for the tool. However, we will only need two switches, dash hosts and dash top ports. We could use the dash ports switch and just scan a range of ports, but for the sake of speed, we can use the top ports uh, switch to scan a user specified number of the most commonly open ports. For example, top ports 50 would scan the uh, 50 most commonly used ports. The full command would then look like this, using the top 50 ports and our example of 172.16.0.10. So it uh, looks like we're going to be scanning the top 50 ports of the last IP address you found in task 17. That is going to be 100. We can go ahead and do that with invoke dash port scan dash host, and that'll be 10, 200, 72, 100, and then top ports 50. So we'll go ahead and let that run, and when uh, we are back, we'll go ahead and take a look through those results. All right, and we are back. Uh, that did actually not take too long at all. Uh, so it looks like we have two open ports. We have port 80 and then 3389. Port 80 is an interesting one for a personal workstation. Uh, 89 is fairly standard since that's RDP, but we can go ahead and submit that as our answer, and there we go. Otherwise, that's going to do it for this video. I will see you guys next time when we cover task 33, but until then, happy hacking.